Hamza, good to see you. And you're looking, you're looking great. You've got a nice, nice top, new, new haircut, or rather hair's grown. There you go. <laughs> yeah, is this, this is the, the new image. That's it, 2.0, 2.0. <laughs> I've um, had, a good, had a good little layoff because of the hand and whatnot, but listen, I'm back now and I'm starting that I'm ruined to come. Yeah, so how, how, explain how long you've been out now. Uh, I've been out nearly, I think, touching nine months or, or 10 months or something like that. But listen, in that time, it almost gave me time to, not almost, it actually did give me time to mature as a fighter and, and outside the ring as well, just, just, just as a man. And it's these little things you can take from outside the ring, go inside the ring and just develop, develop as a whole. And just talk us through the injury, just explain for people who don't know what happened. And yeah, no, after the last, last fight in the second round, I, I must have caught it in a funny angle or whatnot. And I just um, tore the, one of the ligaments or something like that, I don't know what it is, and got it all fixed now and that's it, ready. And you still went on and won the fight. Yeah, I know. And I didn't, to be fair, I didn't even feel it in the fight. I didn't even feel it in the fight. But it's probably because my adrenaline, adrenaline was rushing. But yeah, no, I'm all, all ready to go now. And as I said, we're here in Poland. I mean, you're used to having great support whenever yeah. you fight. But the, the, the boot's on the other foot this time. Yeah, no, it is. But to be fair, there's a, a lot of us who come out. Like I've had about 40 people come out, come out with me now, staying all over, all over the hotels over here. And you'll see them walking around in the, in the, in the HS T-shirts and whatnot. But listen, my, the support I get from, from my supporters, my family and whatnot is great. It always has been. So that's why I was comf confident coming over here because I knew that it wouldn't be, it's away territory, but it's not so much I'm away from all my own supporters. So it's, it's, it's a nice touch. And like I said, I'm just cherishing every moment. But you'll still be, you'll still be fighting a guy who's like the hometown favourite. Yeah, literally, literally. And it's one of, to, be, to be a great fighter, you almost got to do, got to do these things. Do you know what I mean, you got to do these things and... It's all about going in there, putting on a good, a good performance and just execu executing the game plan that, that I've got. I think you called it um, the, the Lion's Den, is that what you said? The Lion's yeah. Den, it's exactly what it is, isn't it? It's exactly what it is, but like I said, I almost thrive of these opportunities. I've done it once before uh, when I fought for my first title in Birmingham um, and now this is the second time I'm doing it. And It's all fun and games fighting in, in London, in your home, but... Like I said, to be great, if you look at what the great fighters have done, they've, they've gone away and, they, and they've done these things. So if this helps me in the future for fighting for titles and what, then so, so be it. And you definitely can't accuse you of uh, taking easy fights. This is, this is no gimme this, is it? No, no, listen. Like I said, it comes to a point in your career where you've got to take that, that step up to see, to see what you're about. And I've been going to LA for, what, two, two and a half years now sparring the top boys but listen sparring them and fighting the top boys is two completely different things so um yeah just want to see where i'm at i'm confident in my in my ability and the hours i've put in training the years and ever since i've been a six-year-old kid do you know what i mean it comes it all, everything comes to this moment and as soon as i get my hand raised it's all, all, almost all comes to fruition and just tell me a bit about this guy you're fighting because as i say yeah. i mean he's a, he's a top quality fighter yeah no listen he's, he's, he's had a good um, amateur career olympian and and um, part of usik's team i think he's i think he's done this training camp with him so do you know what i mean it's one of them ones um where you're going there there'll be a lot of questions but hopefully i, I will answer them and come through with, with great uh, come through with flying colors and you know a bit about yourself i mean he's obviously good but you believe that you're better yeah of course of course you have to you know i mean i believe i'm better than anyone in the 160 division and that's the mentality i've got and i feel like if you haven't got that mentality as a fighter you you almost you shouldn't be fighting you know what i mean what you're doing here if you ain't got that mentality you're not going to put on a great fight for the fans you're not going to knock people out you're not going to be in exciting fights and i suppose that's what that's what boxing's all about right without that without the fans and without everyone who, who are we and yeah, exactly that. And, and your last eleven fights have been pretty flawless, really, yeah. haven't they? Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think any of them have gone the distance. Is that right? No, they've all, all, all been knockouts. Um, and it's, it's almost like a snowball effect. Once you start doing it, and it peels up, you got two in a row, three in a row, and before you know it, like I said, I'm on, I'm on eleven now. So long may it continue. <laughs> And then it'd be nice to get the round dozen. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> make it make it up to twelve. Yeah, no, um, hopefully I, I, I've worked hard. I've worked hard, and I mean, if I do what I'm supposed to do, I don't see I don't see why not. And you've moved up, um, and as we all know, when you when fight, some fighters move up, they don't take the power with them. But yeah. you certainly have. Yeah, no, of course. I reckon even if I move up to about one seventy five, I take the I'd take the power up there with me. But that would be in, in a few years. But as for now, I'm doing what like I said, what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, in the 160 division and hopefully it'll be the division I capture a, a world title in.
Yeah, well, that's obviously the aim. I mean, that's the aim of any fighter, isn't it? You know, and, and are, you, are you confident that is going to happen? Like within, have you got a time frame for that? Or I'd say I, have, I see it happening within the next 20, 24 months. Twenty four months or so for sure. Um, the way I'm going and the way I need to go, obviously Saturday night is the, is, is the first step towards that. And uh, yeah, within the next uh, twenty four months, hopefully. And b b before that, and after this fight, I know you're not looking beyond it, but yeah. there's one name that keeps being mentioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I know people have been talking about the um, the Denzel Bentley fight. It's, it's the fight that makes sense in in the division. We're both under Frank, both almost at the same level. Um, and like I said, it's a fight that makes sense. It's an easy fight to make. Um, so listen, like I said, let me get past Saturday night in order for me to make that fight actually a reality. And then, yeah, I'm sure it'll be a treat for the, for the British boxing fans. And just final question, what's going to happen on Saturday night? Why should people tune in? This is going to be a great, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a great fight. I'll put on um, a dominant display and hopefully get knockout number 12.